Fina. Welcome to the Revolver Fan First podcast, where we go deep with artists into their history as a fan. Today, we have a very special guest, Buzz Osborne of the Melbournes, who has far higher hair than me, and I'm fine with it. I expected it. It's fine. That's what's going on. So, okay, so we're going to go, I want to go back to the beginning with you, Buzz, um, via your new album. So you just put together a massive acoustic record. Yes. Obscene. Four albums worth. Yeah, it's it's absurd, right? It's it's a two and a half two and a half hours of music. Yeah. So the cool thing is about it is it sounds like a '60s death cult, but like the first night, like it's like all the long hairs have been lured to the top of the hill. Everyone is like they're open to it. They might have had the Kool Aid, or it's on the table. They're about ready to go down. None of the poses have shown up in rock and roll. It's just the diehard things it's kind of lurid colors it's psychedelic it's I'm, I'm pretty into it a huge amount of material it's absurd it works a lot better than people would imagine yes like it sounds much more powerful than people would think an acoustic record would it's really acoustic i mean it's um and uh we worked really hard on the vocals the vocals are, are a big part of this as yeah far as like, you know, this kind of stripped down thing dale plays drums but he plays them with brushes so um Yep. Uh, sort of like the way uh, MTV, when MTV used to do unplugged stuff, the, some of the drummers would use the same kind of things. That's yeah. what he did. And, uh, um, but he, we, there's no drumsticks on the record. Yeah. Guitars and, guitars and bass are acoustic. And we worked and mic'd, you know. Yeah. Um, I didn't use an amp at all for anything. It's just really? all, nope, just acoustic, mic'd up acoustic. And um, it's pretty we were powerful. Talking. Yep. I yeah. think that that's um, evident with how uh, the songs are. The yeah. songs are that way, so it, it can work with acoustic, you know. Um, and it's, uh, a um, it's a good me? gateway. It's a good gateway drug. Melvin's album. Did you ever feel like you had different knowledge when you started playing music? Like, what was what was the catalyst for you starting to play music? Like, you're obviously you're absorbing this. It's affecting you. But when does yeah. it, when does it get to a point where you're like, I want to was it to impart knowledge or was it an expressive thing or i just realized that music was not it was lacking something that i thought was um needed to be said which was like a combination of like black sabbath and blue cheer and mixed with punk rock to some degree and a really heavily art element to it yeah that wasn't normal and i thought that 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 needed to be that was a something that needed to be said and it took a long time but uh, as in the end i was right yeah um, our music was influential on bands who went on to sell millions and millions of records and were known throughout the entire globe and cited us as a huge influence so it's like yes. my sensibilities and, and what i thought was would be right really was capable of of changing music on a global level 100 percent and you you took Kurt Cobain to his first show, which is like a Black Flag yes. show, right? Yes. What was yeah, that night like? Yeah, tell us about that oh. night. What were you wearing? What were you doing? What did it smell like? Well, it was a, I don't know what I was wearing. Um, <laughs> cloak, probably. Um, um, it was a hall that maybe held three or 400 people. Yeah. Maybe 500, maybe, if, if it was packed. It was not packed. Um, it was a Black Flag slipping into her. Um, we were friends with Kurt and had been for a long time. And I'd been going into weird music for a lot longer than that. I mean, yeah. The beginning for me was musically was all on my own. Yeah. There was no record stores where I lived. There was no radio stations that would play anything weird or left of center. I discovered all that through pictures and magazines and ordered the records through mail order. You know, I didn't have older brothers or sisters or people that were turning me on to cool music. Unlike the way I did with all the people like Chris Novoselic and the guys in my band and Cobain, all those people would never probably have ever gotten into any of that stuff without me saying, there's this whole world out here that you might be interested in. Awesome. You know, see what you think of this. And so I was like, come on, we're going to go see this band Black Flag. I'd already seen them a bunch of times prior to that, you know, and um, you should come and uh, check it out. But you got to remember, he was not. He was from a poor background. 
that really is a rags to riches story for those guys, all those guys. Um, they had no, really had nothing yeah. to speak of. I mean, no money. The families had no money, no, no parental support whatsoever. No one that believed in anything that they did. Um, um, and so I was like, you know, we, we were friends with all these people. And I was like, you might have fun. It'll be fun. You know, yeah. if you come up and see this thing. It'll, it'll be a lot of fun. And Black Flag were really good that night. It was a great, great, great show. And um, big enough to where it wasn't, it wasn't um, too crazy, but it also wasn't, um, uh, uh, it was enough to get an intense look into this rock music that wasn't like anything he'd ever seen before, you know? Yeah. Certainly not. Um, but I was already way, way into all that. So I had been for quite a while. And yeah. um um, and I remember him saying, I, I, I was up closer to the stage watching the show and he was kind of maybe halfway back or so. And he, I, I remember him saying to me, that is exactly the kind of guitar sound I want, you know, when I play wow. guitar. Yeah. 